and we're live. <laughs> How are you today? I am Tim Van Milgen, and this is Roxim Live, where we talk about the Roxim software, offer training and solutions on how you can get more out of the software so you can design better rockets so you lose fewer rockets um, and so you get more rockets back because they fly straighter and higher and faster and all the good stuff that Roxim provides. Um, if you are new here, we do these every Friday afternoon, uh, 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time um, in the United States. Um, so let's see where we are. <laughs> Um, I'm looking for questions. I got the chat going. I got a monitor over here. Um, I got the chat going. So if you have a question about Roxim, Roxim Pro, or the Launch Visualizer, go ahead and ask that. Um, we're here to answer your questions. This is all about you. Um, yeah, so we're kind of uh, just getting going here. Um, so, uh, if you've never used Roxim before, let me show you my desktop and let me open a new browser window. New window. All right, I'm going to go to Apogee. Here we are on Apogee. Um, our website is apogeerockets.com. And you'll notice up here at the top, we are having technical difficulties with our payment system today. Um, so right now, if you tried to place an order as we're talking, um, we're only taking PayPal, but you, with PayPal, you can use Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, whatever. Um, it's just that we're not doing it directly through our processor. It's going through PayPal. Um, and apparently there's no USPS shipping options available. So that means priority mail, first class mail, or parcel post. Um, it's kind of on hold. If you need to place an order that way, um, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, you'll see that our number is right here on the website. Uh, we put our number on every page so that people can find us. Um, okay, so um, Roxim Live, uh, here's our banner for that. If you click on that, it will take you to our archive page. And on the archive page, you will find our previous episodes. We are on episode number 82 today. Um, and it will be archived there next week. And all the topics that we talk about will be here. Um, so you can um, like go to the YouTube link right there. And then if you wanted to know about changing the total weight of your rocket, just scrub forward to 11 minutes and 25 seconds into the video and you will find how to change the total weight of your rocket. Um, if you'd like to download Roxim, um, you can go to How To and Guides, come down here to Software, and then over here is our menu for Roxim. So you can download the free trial here, purchase it here at Purchase Roxim 10. Um, you can see what the features of Roxim 10, our frequently asked questions, the system requirements, which is very important because Apple and Microsoft keep releasing updates. Um, and we're trying to stay current with the latest updates, but now some of the older versions are starting to drop off that we can't support anymore because we have to support the newer ones. Um, it's just, you know, the issues of dealing with Apple and Microsoft which is why we wanted to create the Launch Visualizer, which is in the cloud and doesn't rely on downloading software. So you just run it in the cloud and any web browser will do. You can use your phone, your tablet, or your desktop computer. Uh, there's also a version history to show you what changes we've made over the years. Um, here's our tutorials. If you're just getting started and you're just cracking it open for the first time, Watch those tutorials, they're really good. Um, here's the Roxim Live training again. And there's also video tutorials for Roxim Pro because it's a little bit different. It shares a lot in common, but there are some differences between the two programs. So that's where you find information about Roxim. 
So let me click out of that and let's see if we got any questions. And so far, I'm not seeing any. <laughs> uh, we do have Popcat here, Ben Reedford, which I have not seen your name before, Ben. So welcome, Ben. Uh, we have Rosa from Ottawa. Johans from the Netherlands and Newtons per second is for um, Josh from Massachusetts and Terry Wheelock is here in the house. So thank you everybody for showing up today. Um, yeah, put in your questions. Um, otherwise, I just have to play around. <laughs> uh, before I started, I loaded in into, uh, I'm in Roxim Pro right now. You can see that here at the top of my screen. Um, and I've loaded in the atomizer. And um, I don't know why I loaded it. I was just thinking about the atomizer. I don't have the atomizer up. I have it over here on the wall. You can't see because you're not seeing my, uh, the wide screen. But I have a picture of the Habu. Um, and this is, the sister to the Habu called the Fabled Flyer. This was released as a plan. And basically we took the Habu rocket, which was this, and we just gave it new decals and a color scheme for people that wanted to uh, play around with, you know, changing the style of their rocket. Um, right now, uh, we were talking about this yesterday in our staff meeting. We're talking about doing a Something similar, just taking a rocket and creating decals for it and releasing just the decals. And the, the topic we chose was Halloween. So um, we're going to put together a Halloween decal sheet. So if you have any ideas on what a Halloween rocket looks like, like a generic rocket like this one right here, um, send us an email and... Um, Tell us what that rocket should look like, and you know, it, we may incorporate your idea. We're just starting this, so um, that is going on right now. So if you come to the Apogee website, just come over here to the side and click on the contact form. Now you can't send images until we reply to you, because when we reply, we'll give you our email address, but we don't put our email address on the internet because then it just opens it up to too much spam. Um, so we only give it out to Rocketeers. So um, yeah, if you want to send us an image, say, I want to send you an image, and then we'll reply back, and then you can reply to that and send your image. Uh, OK, so I think I got the first question. Um, Newtons per second asks, how do you add a motor not on the list from thrust curve? <laughs> Okay, adding motors not on the list. Well, the first thing you need is the physical specifications of the rocket motor. So um, let me uh, do, uh, I'm going to search on the internet for thrust curve. Thrust curve of a rocket motor image. And here are some images. So I'm going to look at this one right here. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to look at this one. Because this one not only has a thrust curve, but it also has some images of um, the rocket burning. So let me see if I can visit this website. Um, and it's called ResearchGate. And oh, this is a big rocket. Um, the thrust curve for a 1500 Newton hybrid motor under firing conditions. Um, so, okay, so that's a thrust curve. Um, you're going to need the thrust curve of your motor, so I assume you already have one. And you're also going to need um, some specifications, physical specifications, dimensions of your rocket motor, like diameter and length and weight, weight um, without burning and then after it's done burning um, because you need those two to find the propellant weight inside the motor. 
But once you have that information, then we can put it into Roxim. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this. So on my computer, I just took a screenshot, <laughs> but I wanted to uh, I wanted to do it like this, where you could see that this is the image that I'm grabbing, and this is time in seconds. Okay, um, and then. Uh, we're going to use a program that comes bundled with Roxim. So let me close this, um, and I want to get to my Applications folder. Let me open up a new Finder window, and I want to go to my Applications folder. On, on the Mac, it's in the Applications folder. On Windows, it's in the Programs folder. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm looking for my Applications folder. My computer is acting a little slow today. I hope it's not slow for you guys on the outside. Um, so I'm going to go down to the Roxim folder. Let me um, is it by date? Is it by date? I don't know what I'm doing. Date. Um, let's resort it. If it doesn't sort. Okay, so Roxim Pro. Or Roxim. So here's the Roxim folder. I'm going to open that. And there's a program inside called Engine Edit. And that's what we're going to use to create motor files. And I'm going to say open. It's been a long time since I opened this program. Oh, it opened it on this screen over here. <laughs> so this is what Engine Edit looks like. And we're going to create that engine curve here. Um, but uh, we can do it from scratch. Let me find that image again. Um, let me go back here up a level. Before I do that, I want to open up another program that I find a little bit convenient to use. And it's called, I'm not seeing it. Um, it's called Thrust Curve Tracer. Ah, I don't see it. So we're going to have to do it the hard way. <laughs> um, let's see if uh, I get, uh, I'm going to go to thrustcurve.org because that's where you can get the program. Thrustcurve.org. And I want to find under the tools, I want to create motor files. Okay, so here's the thrust curve tracer program. And here's the download options are at the bottom of the page. Download this version of universally binary. This was tested on 10.5, but should be work on any image, any version of OS 10. Okay, so it downloaded it. And I'm going to open it up. This, this I find this little program is very convenient to use, which is try to why I'm trying to see if I can get it working. The last time I tried to download it, it did not work for me. Okay, so <laughs> there it is. Uh, phew, yeah, that, that's kind of like useless for me. Open downloads. See, it's got it's got a, a little lock icon on it. Come on, open. Okay, and it created a DMG, and I did that DMG. Did it put it on the desktop? No. TC Tracer. TC Tracer. See, I'm seeing it right here. I am not seeing it right here. Um, dot RTF. 
I'm not seeing that either, and that's in that folder. Why can I not open that? It needs to be updated. Yeah, this is the problem that I had the last time I tried. I could try the Java version. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'll just I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so then uh, I need that image of the uh, thrust curve, so which is on my desktop. Where's my desktop? Okay, I'm going to open that. Got to have that open. So, all right, so this is what we're going to create. Let me see if I can get both of them on the same screen here. Okay, so we're going to create the thrust curve down here based off of this information right here. Um, so I'm going to start in Engine Edit by clicking the button that says Add New Engine. And I need a, it's asking me for a burn time limit. And my limit here, I can see it right here is five seconds. And my new peak thrust, my peak thrust here, I'm going to call it 1400 pounds. Uh, and that's in Newtons. So if you, you got to watch your units right here. So 1400. I click OK. And it give me, it gives me a, um, A grid and and then we can start clicking on the grid and the question is why is it going 200 400 600 800 0 200 400 600 <laughs> ah, that's weird um, I think this version might have a bug let me see if I got an older version this is like the latest version Let me go back to my Applications folder. I save all my downloads of RockSim so that uh, I have older versions available. Okay. See, I, I go back all the way to version 10.1, 10.2. Um, I am going to try 10.4.0 F1. And tried that one. That was released in May of 2022. We've been making some changes to it since then. So I'm going to close that and open this one. So here's the older version. Same thing. Click over here. Five seconds and 1,400 pounds. Newtons, not pounds. Newtons. No, nope, it's still doing it. Let me go to an older version. No. Let me go to 10.3. Still launching it here. Add new engine. Five. 1400 newtons. Okay, that's better. <laughs> My chart is right now. Okay, so now once we got that correct, and we will, I will get with the programmers to get that fixed. Uh, it should be a quick and easy fix. It's just somehow these are labeled wrong. Um, so now we're going to draw this curve here. So then it's kind of like picking points off of it. So um, you can see here I got a half a second. Um, we're at about 1100. So here's a half a second. Here's 1100 and you can just click on it. Um, you can see it's five seconds way out there. Let me shrink this a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, so it's Burn time is five seconds, and then we just have to match the, this curve. Um, and this curve is pretty flat, and then it starts um, around two seconds, it starts falling off. Oops. Okay. 
There you go. So I take this point. Oops, I'm adding points instead of dragging points. Um, and it, it, it kind of tails off like this. Um, so if you, if you make a mistake, what you can do is you come up here to View, and you go to Time Ordered Data. And it will bring up a chart that lists all the points. So 0, 0 is right here. Here's our first one at 0.44. And if you want to tweak it, we can go 0.5. And when you hit the Tab key, it should shift over a little bit. Um, and you can, you know, type in a new thrust level. Um, and like this point right here, just under two seconds. Um, I, got, I got two of them that are really close together. That's probably 0.5. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I can delete selected data. So I can select that row and delete it. And it deleted that point right from there. So what you're going to do is going to create your thrust curve like that based on your measured thrust stand data. Um, and then you need to add in your information. So this could be Roxim Live is the manufacturer. And it's going to give me my total impulse right here. Uh, for that motor, what's that? Um, what's the impulse of different rocket motors? So we can go to maybe like the NAR website, NAR.org, and see the impulse of rocket motors, rocket motor information. Rocket motor information. Oh, I can go to certified, I can try certified motors. Come on, certified motors, certified motors. Um, here's the certified motor list. Okay, so we're looking for a motor that has a total impulse of 2864. And so we're going to go down here. So here is the total impulse right here. And so we're looking in this column, and we're looking for motors that are like um, in the 2000s. So here's a, this one right here is 28, uh, 22. So that's pretty close. So this is going to be a K motor. That's what I was looking for, what, what size that was. So that's going to be a K motor. And then we're going to give the average thrust is a K572, 572. Um, we'll call that a single use and make, maybe we're making this on our own. Um, then you can put in your delays. So when you put in a delay, um, zero means that um, it's going to have an ejection charge and it's going to blow forward like a D120. So like it's for staging. If you're building a K motor, you're probably not going to have that. Uh, you might have a plugged version. So then you would enter a P for plugged. Um, but say it was a like a reload where you can adjust the delay and maybe you had like an 18 second delay. So it comes in two versions. It's either plugged or 18 seconds. Um, let's call it a um, 75 millimeter. And what's the length? Uh, um, we'll make it a 54 and 570 millimeters long, kind of matching that. Um, so it's going to be 54 millimeters in diameter. And what did I say? 570? 570. Length is 570, and that's millimeters. So come over here. Got the spinny ball, which is never good. <laughs> I think it's crashed. Uh, all that work I just did. I think this has happened to me before when I tried to use an older version. Yeah, it's crashed. It, it, uh, so I'm going to have to force quit. Blast. Uh, where's my force quit? Here it is right there. Engine edit not responding. Force quit. 
Okay, so you're gonna create a thrust curve like that. Let's see if I can do it real, I nah, don't oh man, oh man. You do that part. Uh, and then you gotta bring that into Roxon, so you'll save it. Blast it. I'll try one more time. Uh, let me see if there's any messages here. <laughs> Uh, we were talking earlier about a Halloween rocket, and Johan writes, uh, Flying Pumpkins. Um, and Johan also writes, I did that by messing up an engine file in Notepad, Newtons per second. Popcat says, can I get my level 2 certification with my Zephyr rocket? Um, the answer, Popcat, is yes, but that's not what we recommend because um, it's a really high thrust motor and it's a 38 millimeter. For, for level two, we recommend a 54 millimeter because that brings the thrust level way down. It's less stress on the rocket, less stress throughout the entire flight. Um, and we want to, we want to get you certified. So I would suggest using like the Katana as your certification rocket and then using the Zephyr later to fly J motors um, and it's going to go really high um, so you know set yourself up for success first before you try to use everybody wants to use one rocket to do everything um, and that's not really what you should do you know the the NAR in Tripoli they have two different certification levels for a reason and the reason is that it's a lot more stressful on a J motor than an H motor. And just trying to use the same rocket with four times as much thrust is not what the, they would like you to do. Um, so we really recommend you use a bigger um, diameter motor like a 54 millimeter for you flying your J motors because it's less stress on the rocket you'll learn more you'll be more successful uh, Ben Reedford asks on the launch visualizer can you add your own custom rocket I made a rocket on open rocket and would like would and would I be able to transfer that to it um, Okay, let me open open. The, the, the quick answer, Ben, is maybe, because I am not familiar with Open Rocket, but the launch visualizer, uh, let me open up the launch visualizer, new window, um, rocksim.com. The launch visualizer is at rocksim.com. Um, this will take rocksim files. Now I have heard that Open Rocket will save in the Roxim format, but I don't use Open Rocket, so I can't confirm that. Um, so, but if you have a Roxim file, if you have it in the Roxim format, and if it's a legitimate format that the launch visualizer can read, um, you may be able to upload it. So um, you need to be logged in to upload designs. So you need an account. So if you don't have an account, click on the login, try for free, and you can create a new account. Um, just come down here and create new account. You can also sign up via Google or the Apogee website. If, you have, if you've ordered from Apogee before, you have an account, and you can use the password that you use on the Apogee account to log in to the launch visualizer, but you have to click on it here. Uh, once you once you decide which method you're going to log in via, you got to log in that method every time. That's the caveat. Um, so I would just recommend creating a new account. Um, I ha already have an account, so I'm just going to log in under my account and sign in. Um, and then you'll um, to upload a new design. Right up here it says upload new rocket design. Click on that. Um, and then click on the browse button and this will browse your own computer looking for that Roxim file. So um, I've already uploaded that one. So let me see if I've got another one that I haven't uploaded yet. Um, a 
Century Jayhawk. I don't think I've uploaded that. Okay, so um, it will put the name in here and you can change the name if you want. And then hit upload. And what it does is it pulls it from your computer and puts it into the cloud in the storage area that we reserved for you. So not everybody has this file, it's only you. Uh, when it's done, it'll be you'll get a message and then it will load it right here and you'll see it sitting on the launch pad. So there's the rocket and this is three dimensions and you can look at it from any direction. And I got a little remnant problem going on with this little fin right here. Um, but this side looks good. Uh, but you can launch the, the, the upper fins too. So you can um, launch this rocket pretty easy in the launch visualizer. You'll, you'll, next, you'll go down here and choose your launch site and um, it will load a pitch image of the Earth right here. And all these little pins right here are different launch sites. And it's just my internet connection is slow. Uh, okay, so here's our local launch site here in Pueblo, Colorado. And I can look at it in 2D. So now it's looking straight down on it. And I'm just going to keep zooming out until I can see the rest of the country. So you can pick a launch site. And so all these little pins are different launch locations. So here's one right here. If you click on it, it tells you what club it is. So that's Cloud Busters and their NAR section 807. The NAR, the red ones, the blue ones are Tripoli. Um, so that's Tripoli Amarillo. Um, so then I can come over here, or I can double click on it, and it will zoom me in. And you can just keep zooming in until you actually see the launch site. So I'm a little bit off. You can click and drag around on this. I'm just going to zoom in. I want to see the, the launch site because I want to know where I'm going to put my launch pad because that's important when you're launching rockets. You know, because you want to be away from trees and things like that. Um, this one right here, um, they look like they got lots of land. This kind of looks like um, a stadium of some sort, probably, you know, for um, um, rodeos. Obviously, they have a lot of horses in Texas. Um, but I probably wouldn't be launching right from the stadium, so I'd be launching probably, probably further away. So maybe like that would be a good launch site. So you just double click on it and that will place your launch site. Then you confirm the launch site. And what it does is it loads all that information right here. Um, and then you kind of get the lay of the land. So actually these these right here, they look like telephone poles, like shadows coming off of telephone poles. <laughs> So I probably got some power lines running. Yeah, see here's another one. So I I probably got power lines running right through here. So maybe that's not a good launch site, right? So maybe I want to move my launch site further away. Like I'll put it right there. Um, it's close to the river. Um, hopefully it's not a deep river. I don't think it is because I can see kind of mud in the river. Um, so I'm going to kind of launch maybe to the east. So my, my compass rose is right here. So I'm going to swing this around to the east and then give it a little launch angle going to the east. Um, I'm just going to select an engine real quick. Um, so it's telling me there's a 24 millimeter motor in here and then I choose an engine. And it will bring up a database and that's like choose an Aerotech E28, select the delay, give it a seven second delay, click OK. Um, I check the parachute. Um, it does have a parachute in it and it's set for deploying at maximum ejection delay. And then once you get all that set up, you can hit launch, which was right down there at that button. And it tells me how many credits I'm going to use to simulate this. And I'll just go ahead and simulate. And while it's uh, running, let me just check here. Um, it 
Terry Wheelock says, I've been getting requests for my Roxon files. Can I give them away without charge and not break the rules? Terry, you can sell them if you want. I do not care. <laughs> you can give them away. You can sell them. Um, they're your files. You can do what you want with them. I encourage people to share files. I encourage people to post them on the internet um, so that other people can find them. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. I'm going to quit my mail because it's popping up. Okay, so here's the rocket sitting on the pad, and I'm just going to zoom out. And my, my compass is reoriented. Um, so now my, my, that river that we were talking about before, it's maybe like a little creek. Um, it's right there where the launch the, the launch pad is right there. It's a little hard to see, but that's where it is. Um, and we'll go ahead and click the launch button and see the rocket take off. So we're seeing some smoke come out. I can see in the large view right here uh, what the rocket's doing. And it's kind of weathercocking into the wind. You can see it's kind of arcing. It's arcing a lot. <laughs> I like this one. Um, it can because it's really showing what the the launch visualizer can do you know you want to see what your rocket's going to do when you launch it and um, we're at seven seconds and we should be seeing the parachute there it is right there it just popped out it just reoriented the rocket and now the rocket's coming down um, i would like to see you know the, the trajectory path so i can come up here to settings click on that um, I want to show the apogee point. I want to see the trajectory path. And I want to see the extruded path and the ground track. And click OK. All right, so now I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you can see this is where the launch pad was. And it started going towards the east. Let me, let me swing this around so north is more to the top of the screen so you're not disoriented here. Okay, north is up and when we launched we aimed to the east and the rocket did take off to the east but then it did a big loop in the sky. You can see it arced over like this and um, just kind of tilting it up again. So this red line right here is the ground path. So that's like if you extended the, the rocket trajectory straight down to the ground, that's where it went. And uh, you can drag this along the bottom. And, you know, I almost did a whole loop-de-loop. -loop. Look at that. Though. Look how close I landed the launch pad. 23 feet. It just did a giant loop in the sky. Is that cool or what? Um, and it, um, the question is, did it go unstable? Is this a good flight? And the, the way you can tell is by looking at the apogee point. Um, it's, this is color coded. So if it's green, that means good. If it was red, that means bad. That means the rocket went more horizontal than vertical. Um, and if you can, we can display the weathercocking cone right here. Turn that on, and you'll see that we're inside the cone. So I don't know if you can see the cone. It's kind of very, very f faint. So the cone is like here's one line of the cone, here's the other line of the cone, and like we're almost like dead set in the middle. I could change the color of the cone in the uh, settings. Uh, make it more opaque, make it easier to see. See, now you can see it. And we want the apogee point to be inside of that cone. And that's how we define what is a okay flight. It's, it's a little weird, but I would say you could fly it this way. Just kind of be careful because um, it does do a giant loop. Um, then, it, then it came over the top. My delay was way too long. You know, obviously I would like a delay like right there. Um, and then if I did, then it would probably have drifted a lot further. You know, because when it, when the parachute came out, it came out like right there. And the way I can tell 
is that once the parachute comes out, it descends at a constant rate, so you get a nice straight line. So where the line goes from straight to curvy, which seems to be like right in here, um, that's where the parachute came out. Probably like maybe right in there. Um, and you can get the correct delay once you minimize it by clicking that button, um, you can come over here to the optimal delay, and it says the optimal is 3.28 seconds, and we had a 7 seconds, so we're like almost 4 seconds way too long on that delay. So that's the launch visualizer. <laughs> uh, let's see what other questions we have. Miguel Serpa says, hi, I'm planning to purchase the Katana. I still need to learn how does the two-stage rocket work and learn how to make the parachute open at a determined height. Roxim has all the parameters, question mark. Um, yes, Roxim will help you figure it out. Um, the launch visualizer will also help you to figure it out. Um, so if you, ha let me see if I've loaded in a katana into this design, into mine. So I'm going to go select rocket design, choose design. Uh, I'm going to search for katana. There it is, katana. I select it. And it should load here in a second. Come on, katana. There it goes. Like I said, my internet's slow today. Okay, so there's the katana sitting on the launch pad, and it's at an angle because it remembered our last settings right here. So, um, Miguel, um, this, you're going to do the same thing in RockSim that you'll do here on the launch visualizer. So you can do it on the launch visualizer or RockSim. It doesn't matter. Um, if you need the Katana file, it is on the Apogee website. So if I go to the Apogee website and I do a search for Katana, you just have to start typing and it will find it. Click on that. And then here's what the Katana looks like. And if you just scroll down a little bit um, where it says Roxim file, Right here, click on that, and it will jump down to the bottom of the page where the Roxim file is. So then you can download it here or here. Um, so you can download it, and then you can upload it right back into the launch visualizer. <laughs> um, which is so then it's in your in your storage area in the launch visualizer. Um, so that's what I did, um, and then. We'll leave all the settings the same. Um, so what, I'm, what I mean is like the launch site, the launch angle, and the wind. We'll leave all that the same. We're, we're just going to select our motor. So you want a level 2. Um, so a level 2 is a J motor. So when we go to select motors, we want to select a J motor. So you go to choose engine. Come on, wakey, wakey. And then we're going to look in the engine code for a J motor. So I'm just going to scroll down. Let me resort it because I got it's going in. It's, it was sorted by um, manufacturer. Now it's sorted by engine. And you can like um, say, I only want Cesaroni motors. So then you can come down here and say, manufacturer filter, just show me the Cesaroni. Or you could do the Aerotech. So now it's only showing the Cesaroni motors. And then I can just scroll through them until I find my J motors. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, for the most part, um, just don't pick something that has really low thrust. So low thrust is a low number right here. So like a J140, um, smaller than that. Um, this is a J1365, so that's a really high thrust motor. But it, what, the way it's sorting is it's going, the J is first, and then it's looking at the first number, 
And then the second number, so 13 is smaller than 14, even though 1365 is bigger than 140. It's just a quirk on how it sorts things. Um, so now I'm in the I motors, but I need a J motor. So I would I would pick a J that's like in the 200s or 300s to start with, because those are good average thrust motors that aren't going to strip the fins off your rocket. Um, you want to you know you want to stay kind of um, low to medium thrust, but I mean not so low like a really long burn motor like an 8 second or 9 second burn motor because that, that thrust is a little bit too low. Um, it's still a J motor because it just burns for a long time but you want to you want to kick it off the pad but not so hard that you're going to strip fins. So like I said you know the 200 to 300 range um, would all probably be really good motors. So I'm going to check, uh, pick this one right here, a J355. RL stands for red line, so that means it has a red flame. Um, then you have to select your delay, and I don't know what delay I'm going to need. Um, the longest delay that um, this comes with is 16 seconds, and this one is adjustable, so you're going to adjust it down. And we're going to figure out, using the software, what the optimum is. And so you just select, I always tell people, just select the longest delay. So this is 16 seconds. Click OK. So now we've loaded that in there. Um, and then we're going to come down to flight events. Uh, and you can see the Katana has two parachutes. We have the 48-inch parachute, and then we have this other one called parachute. Um, the unfortunate thing is I don't know what size that is. I'm assuming it's the smaller parachute. I hope it's the smaller parachute, but we'll find out when we run our simulation. Because if it's a big parachute, the descent rate is going to be flat. You'll see it as you know as it as the wind starts carrying it downrange. If it's kind of like going more horizontal than vertical, then you got a big parachute. Um, if it's coming down more vertical, then that's the drug chute. That means it's falling fast. It's just falling like a rock, which is what we want. We want it to come down fast. And then when it gets closer to the ground, we'd release the big parachute and that will slow it down for landing. So we want that to come out low to the ground so that um, it doesn't drift as far with the wind. And this is why we use dual deployment so that it doesn't go so far because nobody likes to walk. Um, well, you know, you might like take a walk, but when you're out on a launch range, you want to go be flying rockets, so you want to get back as fast, fast as possible. So when you're on the launch range, you don't want to walk. Um, okay, so then we have to tell it when these parachutes are going to come out. So this small one, we want that one to come out at Apogee. So you'll just go to the event description. So this is the flight event. And we're going to say deploy at Apogee. And then for the main parachute, we're going to say deploy at a lower altitude. So we're going to say deploy at an altitude, and then we have to tell it what altitude that's going to be. So in the real world, you're going to set this with your electronics on your altimeter. And typically, they're set anywhere from a low of about 400 feet to all the way to 1,000 feet. So deploying at 1,000 feet, you're going to have a longer walk. Deploying it lower, a shorter walk. You don't want to deploy it too low, like at 100 feet. The reason is that it does take some time for the parachute to fully open and start slowing the rocket down. So if you deploy it too low of an altitude, it may not open fully by the time it slams into the ground. So that's kind of why 400 feet is kind of like the lowest that you really want to set an altimeter to. So I'm going to scroll over here to deploy at altitude, and I'm going to type in my, we'll, we'll go 400 feet, just type it in, 400 feet, and now we're ready to launch. So right down here is our launch button. Go ahead and click that, and it tells me how many um, credits I'm using. Because it's a big motor, it's using a lot more, but it's okay. I still got a lot of credits, and I can always get more. And it's running the simulation now. And hopefully it shows me <laughs> the simulation. 
Uh, okay, it didn't. Let's try it again. Rerun. Select one more of the simulations to run. What happened? We do have a loader motor, motor loaded. Yeah, the J355. Launch. I'll launch it again, see what happens. Huh, it kind of hiccuped on me. Um, so if that happens, there's my J's. Do I have a J355? J354. 355 red line, but that's 15 second delay, not the, the uh, no, that's a 335, and went 355. Okay, so it kind of hiccuped on me. So the nice thing about having online software is you can just reload the page and it reloads the software. The downside is I got to reload the, the rocket. <laughs> I got to run it again, but it's quick. Okay, so choose a design. <sighs> it's not seeing me. Come on, wakey, wakey. It's still loading in the background. That's what's going on. Like I said, my internet is slow today. This is usually a lot faster. I can see, I can see I'm still logged in. So that's not the problem. Um, select rocket design, choose a design. There we go. Now we can do katana. Select it. So I'm just going to do this really fast. Got to select my launch site. And that was um, Tripoli Amarillo. It's still loading. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, <laughs> Yo Johan says, I want Michelle. <laughs> I got to spell Tripoli right. Tripoli. Am uh, Rillo. Okay. And it will move me to Amarillo. It's loading the map. Yeah, Michelle is uh, she's much more patient than I am. <laughs> okay, so we're at that launch site again. So I need to move my launch pads, get them away from these power lines. This is the advantage of the launch visualizer and being able to see, uh, you know, features like that. So I got a, I got a tree here that looks like a scrubby tree. So I'm okay there launching there. So I'm going to say that's where I'm launching. Um, and again, we're going to aim it a little bit to the east, not much. Um, and swing it around to the east. And choose an engine. Come on. Terry says, oh, can we do same stage staging, meaning the motors are clustered on the same stage but ignited in sequence? Uh, and yes, Terry, we can do that. Um, I'll show you that after this one if we have time. So uh, I remember we were at Cesaroni J. Let me sort it. And we're in the K's again. J355 red line, 16 second delay, click OK. Going to my flight events, I'm doing this really fast. So um, the drogue shoot at Apogee, the main shoot at altitude, and then we need to give it an altitude 400 feet. OK, and then we can launch. And cross our fingers. It did it again. It should take a lot longer than that. 
What is going on? <laughs> okay, we'll not use the launch visualizer. It's acting funky. Uh, um, so Roxim Designs. Oh, I'm in Roxim Pro, um, and I um, I want to be in Roxim. So let me close that. Here's Roxim. I can see this is Roxim. Um, we're going to look at the katana. We're going to set it up the same way. So I need to find my designs. And then I need to, oh, katana. I'm just scrolling through my list of rocket designs. Katana, 54 millimeter. Okay, so here's the Katana in Roxam. So we're going to prep for launch. Choose an engine. And I'm going to do Cesaroni. Show all engines. Why is it not showing me? It's showing me 98 millimeter engines. <laughs> what is going on? Show all. And we show only that match. Okay, it's only showing me the Aerotech motors. I've lost my Cesaroni motors. All right, so we'll we'll choose a K250. Somehow my database got jacked up. Um, and we're going to choose a custom delay. We'll choose 18 seconds just for the delay. Click OK. And the flight events. Okay, so we got an 18-inch drogue, and we want to pop that one at Apogee and the main one at 400 feet. And we'll let's take a look at our simulation starting state. We need a 98-inch launch rail. Uh, we're going to go a few degrees off of that. Launch conditions, we got an eight mile an hour wind, and we just hit flight profile. So you can see that the motor is loaded. That K motor is long. And it's running the simulation. And it's now loading the 2D flight profile. So here's the rocket. See, the advantage of the visualizer, it's everything's in 3D. In Roxim, it's only 2D. So you don't get the lay of the land and where that creek was or the power lines or that scrubby tree that was near us. Um, but at least we can see the uh, trajectory. So this is our weather cocking cone, which I explained earlier. We want to keep the apogee point inside of this cone. And so we're going to launch it. The rocket's taken off. It's, it's already at 1,000 feet. So even though it doesn't look like it went a long way, it, it did in real life. And it's laying down a lot of smoke. And that's a long burn motor there, man. Um, each of these dots is one second apart. So, you know, you can see the thrust burned out right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost 10 seconds of burn. That's a really long burn. But the rocket went really straight, so that's good. And now the drogue parachute is out, and it's falling pretty fast. Like I said, if the drogue is going more vertical than horizontal, or the parachute, then we can tell that's that's a small parachute because it's it's just the rocket's heavy, and you got a small parachute, so of course it's going to come down fast. Um, but fast is relative. We're already at 55 seconds, and it's still way up in the sky. It's at over 8,000 feet. So I'm going to speed things up until we get down to about 400 feet. So we're at 600 feet, 500, 469, and then it slows down. And it's really hard to see, but right in here, you see you got a line of dots coming almost vertical. And then here, closer to the bottom, it starts going a little bit more horizontal. That means that the big parachute came out and it's starting to drift. Um, and it drifted, doesn't look like it went far, but this is 2,500 feet away. 
So the rocket was in the sky. It went so high that even with a small parachute, an 18-inch drogue chute, it still drifted a long way because it took a long time to come, come down that distance. Um, but, you know, if that big parachute would have came out up here, it probably would have been well over, you know, 5,000 feet, which is about a mile away. Okay, so let's go to Terry's question. So hopefully, um, Miguel, so um, the, the other thing that you want to look at is the optimal delay. So um, bef we had that set at 18 seconds, but it tells us our optimal delay is 13 seconds. So on our, um, our drogue parachute to pop out at Apogee, it would be 13.39 seconds that we'd adjust the delay to. Because we're using the motor engine as the backup delay, you're going to have a dual deployment altimeter in there, and it has an Apogee charge and a main parachute charge. And we want our Apogee charge to come out about the same time that the ejection charge in the rocket motor fires. About the same time. They're never going to be identical. So one is a, one's going to fire first. Either the, the Apogee charge and the altimeter is going to fire first, or the main, or the, you know, the ejection charge in the rocket motor is going to fire first. And it's going to push out the drogue chute. So once the drogue chute is out, and if and the other ejection charge fires, it doesn't matter because it's just blowing out through a, a hollow tube. So it's just venting out into the atmosphere, and it, there's, it doesn't do anything. But it's a backup. We need to have a backup. So because um, the worst thing that could happen is nothing comes out. Then the rocket comes over the top, and then it just comes screaming in the ground, um, and it's going to put a hole in the ground. And uh, we hope that there's nothing underneath that hole. <laughs> or nothing on top of the hole that it's going to make. Um, so that's what you're going to set your um, delay to on your rocket engine. And then you can see how high it went. It went 11,561 feet on that K250. You're going to have a, a J motor. So it's going, to be, it's going to be lower. You know, you can see a J motor is, is less, about half of what the K motor is. Okay. All right, let me get to Terry's question. Uh, Pop Cat says, my new school is Colorado Skies Academy, and it is a flight and aviation school. Well, Pop Cat, that's awesome. School is just going to be starting here soon. I know here in Colorado Springs, it starts this week, this coming week. Um, so my daughter's going back to school. Um, Terry Wheelock says, we want the new GPS return parach parachute so we don't have to walk. The rocket comes back to us. Terry, we're still working on it. In fact, I was working on it today before, the, uh, before this event. It's, unfortunately, it's not going to be GPS, but it is going to be radio controlled. And the reason it's not GPS is because of um, the chip shortage from the pandemic. You know, computer chips, we just can't get the chips right now to make the GPS version. So it's going to be RC version. So RC means you got to supply your own radio, your own servos, and receiver and battery, and a charger. Um, so if you have RC radio gear, if you've done any types of RC, you know, even car RCs will work because we're only using one channel. We're just turning left or right. Um, so basically, you're going to fly it back down to yourself. It's going to be a little bit trickier than GPS, but um, you know it's going to be fun because <laughs> you're not going to have to walk so far. Um, but that's still coming. We're working on it. Um, we're getting closer and closer, but I don't have a date yet because there's still a couple of components that we're missing. <sighs> um, Okay, Johan says, time flies when you're watching Roxim tutorials. That's good. Um, Johan says, there must be giant sequoias in the background. <laughs> okay, and Miguel says, thanks, that's excellent. Okay, so Terry says, can we do same stage staging? So basically, he's, he's talking about clustering. Um, so we need a rocket that has cluster motors. Um, the Lock Ultimate has cluster motors. So let me see if I can find the Lock Ultimate. Uh, 
Lock Ultimate right here. Open that. And save changes? No. Okay, so here's the Lock Ultimate. And if you look in the back end, we have seven rocket motors back there. Um, so can we fire these off one right after the other as the rocket's going up? And the answer is yes, you can. So how do you do that? Um, so we're running low on time here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and see this one right here with all these motors listed. Um, that's a previously run simulation, but I can load the motors quickly just by highlighting it and using my mouse and right clicking on it. And it brings up this little menu. And from that menu, I can say load engines. So it just loaded all of those rocket engines into the back end of the rocket, as you can see back here. So now the engines are loaded. We're going to go prepare for launch. You can see they all have an eight second delay. So now we want to fire these at different times. Um, and you can see right here, if I look at the back of the rocket motor, a rocket, let me make this a little bit bigger here and a little smaller there. Okay, so you can see this one right here has a blue line around it. That's because it's highlighted. So now if I click that one, it's that one. I want this one in the middle, so I need to click until I find it. So this is my center motor. So this one I definitely want to fire first. So to change when they fire, you're going to use the ignition delay. So this one I can fire on the ground. I probably want to fire maybe three of them on the ground just to get this thing off into the air. So I can either pick the middle one or the these three, or I can do a cross like this or a cross like this. So let's let's say that one, that one. So this section right here is going to fire first, and then I'm going to fire two motors here um, a little bit later in the flight. Um, how much later? Um, I, well, I need to know how long these motors burn. So if I double click on it, and it brings up the motor, and I can look at the burn time. So this motor burns for 2.42 seconds. So anything, I can, I can set it at one second from liftoff, or two seconds, or 2.42 seconds, or three seconds. Um, let's try, um, let's go three seconds. So let me find the next motor. So this one right here, we're going to say this one is going to um, start at three seconds. Um, and then this one is at three seconds. And then these last two, let's make these at six seconds. So this is from liftoff. So, um, so the way you do this in real life is with a timer. Is your timer at three seconds from liftoff will fire these two motors and then three seconds after that these other ones will fire so they're going to go foom, 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 like staging okay so let's go to it only has a parachute in it um, the one thing about this is when is the parachute going to come out and the answer is um, right now it's set at eight seconds but it's going to be eight seconds from from you know when the first one fires is when the parachute's coming out. Um, so the first one's going to come out at eight seconds. Um, but we can come to the flight events and we can change this from maximum ejection delay to let's say let's fire it at Apogee and that way we don't care. So we're going to use a lot onboard electronics to fire it to kick it out of the rocket. Um, simulation controls that's fine. Starting state's fine. Launch some conditions is fine. So let's see this launch. And um, it's running the simulation now. Okay, so here's our rocket down here. When we launch it, rocket takes off. In 2.42 seconds, it burns out. You see the little gap in the smoke? Another little gap because it was coasting. So we got foom, foom, foom. <laughs> Um, and that's why I chose a little bit longer delay because I wanted to see that gap in the smoke and I'm just bringing it down to the ground. You can see that this one 
Um, it's going to land, you know, 733 feet away. If I cancel it, I can see how high it went. It only went almost 2,000 feet. Um, so that is delayed staging or uh, delayed clustering. Um, and you can do this, you can have multiple stages, and each one of them is a cluster. And so you can, you know, imagine um, s seven motors in each stage. We have one rocket kit. It's a um, U.S. Rockets, uh, what is it called, that has, it's a two-stage with clusters in it. So I want to go to shopping and view rockets by manufacturer. And I know it's U.S. Rockets, I just can't remember the name. U.S. Rockets could be high test 3100. Yep, this one right here. So this rocket um, has a cluster of four rockets in each stage. So you could do, on the bottom stage, you could fire two to get it off the ground, and then a little bit later, the next two fire, and then it stages, and then two more fire, and then two more fire. So you get four little things of smoke going up into the air. Um, this is this is a um, this is a challenging rocket. I would not recommend this to anybody um, that doesn't have a lot of experience because it's just setting it up and setting up the electronics and trying to do it. Um, it's hard. Um, so so basically, I would say don't even try to do that delayed because it's it's just gonna. There, in, in the booster stage, there's just no room to put the electronics. Um, so you look back here, um, it's just straight tubes. There's no room, there's no way to put electronics in there. So, um, yeah, so I would just use all of the same four motors in the bottom stage. You could do it with the top stage. Um, the electronic wires have to come down in the middle of the tubes can see here they come from the middle and then they come around the side it's a challenge it's definitely a challenge and it, it, I, I would not recommend this unless you were really experienced um, so anyway we are a little bit long and I didn't uh, that first question with the creating a thrust curve and loading that into Roxim I apologize because you know it crashed on me and I tried I had to figure out why that's not working and hopefully ask the same question again next time uh, who was that uh, I forget who that asked that I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't. Whoever you were, <laughs> maybe it was Ben. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't Ben. Ben asked about uh, loading open rocket files into the launch visualizer. Uh, so, um, yeah, we are way past time again, and I I appreciate the good questions. Um, and I wish my computer was faster today, but it was, seems to be running slow. And the launch visualizer is giving me problems, and engine edit is giving me problems. Um, but we're fighting through it. <laughs> we're here to help. Um, if you have questions about Roxam, just come to the Apogee website. Uh, it's www.apogeerockets.com. Um, there's a contact form there, and you can ask your questions, and we can try to answer them. Uh, we will be back next week. Same time, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, which is uh, 4 p.m. on the East Coast, 3 p.m. in California. And wherever you are in, uh, in the Netherlands, whatever time it is, it's kind of like 10 p.m. there, so it's late. Um, I would already be in bed. <laughs> so until next week, go out and launch something. So we're going to launch this in three two, one, end stream. <laughs>